I am Karen Rabinovitz. I am the co-founder of SLUMU Institute. And I have a very difficult to share and tragic story, but one that does have light at the end of it. Um, a few years ago, my life completely imploded, exploded, and I, I don't even have the words for the level of blow up and, and decimation that I experienced. From the outside, it looked like everything was great. I started a company that was thriving. It was in the most exciting space. It was in the social media influencer world. And I was just celebrating my 10th wedding anniversary. But my marriage had been through a lot of struggle and failed IVF treatments. And I think there was the time where I realized I would now be living a life without children. And I started to really look at my marriage and I will always love my husband, but we were not connecting and we were fighting a lot. And our relationship became very toxic. At the same time, I was feeling incredibly unnourished in the space that I was working in. When I started my company, as a, which, which was a talent management agency for social media influencers, I really began in this incredibly creative spirit. And it was all about supporting young talent, having them bring their dreams to life and we were co-creating and you know a lot of a lot of things that were happening became really transactional and i definitely felt like i sort of lost my creative voice and my marriage like i was saying was struggling and we had separated and it was a very painful separation it was during this time that he passed away it was unexpected it was tragic and it completely broke my heart. I <sighs> suffered from enormous PTSD. I, I definitely had a breakdown. I went into such an incredibly deep depression that I don't think I really left my house for about a year. I also left my company during this time. And I spent almost all of my days on the floor in tears and all of my nights crying myself to sleep. I didn't think that there would ever be a purpose for me again. I didn't know how to function in the world. I didn't know how to handle all the pain I was in. I, I was getting a lot of help and I was seeing a therapist and a psychiatrist and healers and energy workers and shamans and going to group therapy and seeking support from the Zen Center and um, Buddhist teachers and just just trying to find something that would enable me to find peace and it seemed like an impossible feat. Nine months after I then lost my cousin in the Parkland school shooting and that that really sort of ripped my soul out. I just felt at that point that life was not worth living. I had no idea what I would want to do with my career. I had no idea how to feel peaceful or um, healing around the passing of my husband. And I couldn't believe that I lived in a world where kids were being shot in school. Um, and it, it was hard for me to reconcile a world where there was such extraordinary gun violence. I wouldn't say that I was technically suicidal, but I definitely didn't really want to live. And I would spend a lot of my nights thinking, if I stressed hard enough, maybe I could get cancer. And that would just be the solution, and I didn't have to be in this world. Uh, it, was, it was traumatic. I mean, I, I didn't recognize myself. Um, I, I looked horrific. You know, it looked like somebody had socked me in the eyes at all times. And, you know, I'd, 
red and dark circles and you know I had spent all of my time was spent in tears and that is when a very dear friend of mine came over with her daughter her daughter at the time was 10 and her daughter had slime with her and had ingredients to make slime with her she brought it because she thought oh I'll be sitting on my own all day while my mom and her friend catch up and I grew up with slime so I and I knew there was this big slime community I knew there was a major phenomenon culturally and I wanted to play with what today's slime was to see what it was like compared to the slime I grew up with so I was immediately give me some slime let me get some of that slime to show you this is the action of playing with slime and the minute I started touching it I was immediately obsessed because I was drawn to how satisfying if it looked when it was drizzling, it felt incredible to touch. It made sounds when I would squeeze it, and it was scented. This one smells like bubble gum. Four hours later, I am still making slime with Maddie, playing with Maddie, and having engaged conversations around slime. And that's when it hit me. I wasn't grieving. I wasn't crying. I wasn't in my depression. I was in the moment. And I felt like a version of myself that I never thought I would feel again. I was me at seven. I had this innocent excitement. And when my friend was leaving, I sort of grabbed Maddie and I said, where do I get more slime? I have to have this. Because nothing that I was doing, not the medication I was taking, not the healers, not the shamans, not the group therapy, not the Zen center, not the Buddhist teachers, not the religious council, none of the support groups, nothing was, was giving me any reprieve anywhere. So. Maddie explained to me that there was this incredible community and that they do restocks, which are very much like a supreme drop. They will say new, you know, release restock at 7 p.m. Eastern on Friday. I would start setting my, I started setting my calendar in my phone to remind me of Slimer restocks. And I started to buy enormous amounts of slime. And I found that the more I did, the more in the moment. I became and it wasn't as if the past traumas weren't in me or that they weren't hurting me they were but something gave me a feeling of peace and I was gonna take that any which way that I could I started leaving the house with slime I started taking it to dinner with my friends I started walking around my neighborhood with slime I brought it to art galleries with me I found that when I had slime with me and didn't care how other people thought of me or if I, I looked a little insane walking around the streets like this I found the more I had this with me the more safe I felt and the less anxiety I had and a good friend of mine Sarah Schiller was going through a hard time and I said to her, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm coming over with some slime. And I came to her house with slime, and the two of us sat on her floor playing with slime. Her daughters started playing with us, and it was amazing to watch how they engaged with it. And it was amazing to see how she also, as an adult in her late 40s, felt the same joy that I was experiencing. So we began to get together on Saturdays and Sundays and have slime dates. The more we started doing this, the more we started saying, we have to bring this to people. Uh, other people have to feel this magic because it's not just a kid's toy. There is a real benefit to experiencing it. And that is what really drove the, the birth of Salumo Institute. And we started to build a business plan. And I started to realize that I, I was living again. And I still grieve, I still mourn, I still feel the pain that I had in my life, but I'm now able to get into the world and participate and give to the world and share something that magically helped me and on some level heal a little more every day. I'll, I'll carry the, the tragedies and the losses with me and there's a piece of me that will never be the same, but what this has shown me and, and what my story has really shown me is that you could be on the brink of not wanting to live and you could think that everything, everything that you had is gone and that you didn't know what meaning life would ever fulfill for you and then claw your way back and find a little piece of your soul and 
recreate joy and be able to share it with other people.